passionate about music. I'm delighted to welcome our very special guest, the big voice of 2011, Claire Maguire. Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm really, really excited to be here. This is always like one of my favourite places to come, so thank yeah. you for having me. Yeah, because you came here before with Neil yeah. and Debbie yeah. on The Breakfast Show. Very, very funny. Crazy Loved bunch. It. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, it's been a phenomenal year for you. I was just kind of talking to you off air yep. just then about the the kind of instant rise to, to fame almost in the last few months. It's just been a crazy year, hasn't it? It's been really, really amazing. You know, I think that... For me, I, I was absolutely, I, nobody knew anything about me, didn't have like a fan base, didn't have anything. And I just kind of put this album out and didn't know what to expect. And I was really happy to get such support from people like the BBC poll and all that kind of thing, MTV. And then that kind of made me grow a, a very solid fan base. And it's been very organic, which is what I really like. I think that, you know, I was touring with Plan B, then I went to Hertz, then I went to the script and then just went straight onto my own tour very recently and just saw kind of 600 people turn up. And it was just, it was was amazing and I just think that that's been a, incredible for me it's very inspiring and this year has been great really great very sudden though was it nerve-wracking yeah. how sudden it was because um, it's just been it's just catapulted you I don't it? know it's it's kind of it's just good it was a it was a massive relief actually for me because I was writing the album for like four years so when I released it and it just took so much pressure away from me because I thought okay I didn't need to you don't need to overthink these things it's yeah. like it's music it's art it should be fun it should be enjoyable um, I'm 23 so I just got to have fun with it yeah. you know and not not think about it too much and not worry or stress myself so I've just been absolutely loving it it's been great well you came fifth in the BBC Sound of 2011 poll yeah uh, Q Magazine picture up as well the next best thing you got the award for that yeah it's all positive it's all positive yeah. it's all really good and um you know and that's the way that you have to look at it i mean um i was just saying earlier you've just got to kind of surround yourself with good people who kind of tell you're an idiot all the time and just like enjoy it and yeah. you have a good band who make you laugh and everything and and great fans which i have got i mean i've got such a solid fan base already that kind of always tweet me always facebook me and and I go and stand with them and talk to them for like hours after my gigs. And I really love them. So I've been really enjoying it. And you've had the comparisons already yes. with the other female artists like so Stevie many. Nicks, who I think you like, don't you, from Fleetwood Mac? Stevie oh, Nicks. yeah, I love Stevie Nicks. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Sean from Cochine, I think you sound a little bit like as well. Yes, yeah. Um, and obviously Annie Lennox, people Annie are like, Lennox. oh, big female vocalist. Yeah, Cher as well, yeah. a lot of people say. Um, yeah, I get so many comparisons, but I think, you know, I've seen it before. I remember, like, last year, I was good friends, well, I'm good friends with, like, Ellie Golding and Marina and Diamonds, and yeah. I remember when they came out, loads of people saying the similar things, like, um, comparing them to people. I think it always happens at the beginning, and you've got to kind of accept it, take it. I've been really lucky with the people I've got, because they've all been great big divas sort of thing, yeah. so I'm pleased about it. We love the divas. Yeah, we love the divas, so <laughs> that's been that's been good, and and, um, you know, I just hope that maybe in like, you know, a couple more months, people start seeing me as an individual, hopefully. I don't it's know. really encouraging. I think it's a great time for female singers at the moment. It is. Very strong female very, singers. Very, very strong female yeah. singers. And I was saying that, I was saying that the other day, because I was saying everybody who is doing well as a female singer, they're all very individual and strong and nice people. You know, like I'm really pleased with the success Adele's having as well, because she's such a nice she's girl. She's amazing. And she's so talented. Very down to earth as well. Very when you see down an to interview. earth. Yeah. yeah. I, I always say I really want to meet her because she, she just seems so funny. Yeah. Like she just go out Hilarious. and have a laugh with you. You know. You got to be like that, I think, yeah. you, to be in the industry. Yes, definitely. Especially I think if you it, get certain knockbacks from certain critics. Yes, exactly. I mean, that's what I say. Like you have to really keep your feet in the ground and just not take yourself seriously because I think that that's when I notice I think people who are in my position if they take themselves too seriously yeah. and they're always you know thinking about things too deeply I mean that's what kind of takes you off track and you won't get back on I think just so have fun with it just have fun yeah. yeah how it should be yeah tell us the story about how it all started because obviously you've been well from an early age wanted to be a singer yes you've had that voice um, I, re- I saw an interview with you just this morning actually about where you were describing when you were in a school play and you realised that you had the biggest voice yes kind of Outshone all the others. Yeah, that that was a very embarrassing moment, actually. <laughs> um, I just remember all the parents kind of looking at me a bit strangely, like, <laughs> where's this girl with this... this?" Because I was tiny, um, and they were like, why has she got this big voice? So I started <laughs> miming, and I think I mimed my way through school, really. I can secretly had singing lessons. What you know? a waste. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's kind of like I was one of them sad characters from Glee that's just like, I can't tell anyone, and then I like, go and sing in the shower or something. <laughs> but, um, yeah, but, uh, no... I, I always love singing, you know, and I've always been writing as well since I was very young. And um, it's funny, actually, because I never really saw myself as, oh, I'm this like great singer and I'm going to be a big singer. I always just thought of myself as wanting to be in the studio and writing songs. That's really where my kind of love started and performing as well, because performing was my release. I think, you yeah. know, I always I always liked to be in like plays and all that thing when I was at school. And it's, it was where I was myself, I think. 
my boyfriend is completely gutted Aww. for a couple of reasons. Well, one reason because he wanted to see Hertz at the Union Chapel. Yes. And the other reason because he wanted to see you. And Aww. you were supporting Hertz as well. Yeah, I was. <laughs> I've supported them a lot. They've been so supportive of me, actually. And um, I was just listening to them the other day say, saying that they love Break These Chains, which is a song from my record. And I, I love I love the fact that I've had so much support from so many musicians, you know, who have done really well. And that means a lot to me because I think that it, it gives you confidence, I think, if, if people in your same kind of vein of work Definitely. think that what you're doing is good. Yeah, they're it's lovely great. guys as well, aren't they? Really Harris? nice. Yeah. I mean, it's funny because you see them, and I remember I hadn't met them before I went on tour with them, and uh, I saw their posters and their music, and I was thinking, well, what are they going to be like? And then I met them, and they're so down to earth and so lovely. And, and just funny. funny. And just really funny, yeah. yeah, really funny. You know, so, yeah, they're great. You've got all the festival <laughs> dates coming up in the summer, which is very exciting, and I'm going to be seeing you at Glass. Yeah, because I'm gonna be there. Yay. It's gonna be amazing. Are you looking forward to that? And all the other dates as well. Best of all. And who are you um, listening to at the moment? Um, oh gosh, because so I, I, I this is the thing about your music because it's hard to categorise. Yes, and I love that because that's exciting. You're not you're not boring in any way. You're okay. kind of a bit of everything. Yeah, I think that I'm going to constantly be confusing people because I'm sure that my next record will be completely different. Yeah, that's and... great, though, <laughs> isn't it? It keeps people on their toes. Aren't yeah, it? well, it's, I just always do what I really love at the time, and uh, I've got to put everything that I have into it, and I can't be thinking too much about you know fitting certain genres because you can't have fun with it in that in that way, you know, and. Um, and I just hope to grow sort of gradually. But at the moment, I'm listening to loads and loads of people. I'm like obsessed with the last Kanye record, actually, and my beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy, which I love. And uh, I always listen to people, to all the classic artists like um, Tina Turner, as I just yeah. mentioned. And, um, you know, Grace Jones. And I love Lady Gaga at the minute. I love her new records. Adele. Wouldn't it be boring to just listen to one type of music, though? Yes, you need to listen be. to all sorts. You have it? to. You really have to. I, I'm. I'm really lucky because I've got such an eclectic taste of music. I just love. I could listen to like classical music, then listen to blues music, then dance music, electronic music, and that kind of helps me to write with different people. I mean, you know, at the moment I'm collaborating with so many different people who completely different types of music, and it makes it so fun for me. It makes it fresh every day. You know. Yeah, definitely. I wish Debbie from the Breakfast Show was here now because she saw you at JY. I didn't see that show unfortunately but I have seen it on YouTube and I just have to say very brave of you to come on with a production that was just kind of not expected at JY quite yeah. dark quite theatrical <laughs> quite theatrical um, ain't nobody wasn't it First yeah scene. yeah and I uh, want to thank Jeremy Joseph as well for letting me do that because um, you know absolutely unknown at that point and um, and went on with nobody had any expectations and I came out with four dancers um, you know, I wanted the theme to be heaven because it was in heaven, and yeah. I, I wanted I wanted it to be quite um, theatrical and a bit of hell in there as well because yeah. it was quite dark. Yeah, it was quite dark, <laughs> but it was it was fun. You know, the well, the, definitely the beginning, the breakage remix of Ain't yeah. Nobody, but then we did a cover of um, uh, Katy Perry Firework, which was quite fun and pop. Um, but then, you know. It was that was such a great day. I loved it. I love going there as well. It's quite gothic, wasn't it? Debbie says it's her favourite performance actually. Really? Yeah, she loved it. Oh, she's blown away by it. Oh, she did tweet me actually. Oh, did she? Nice about, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> she's really. Are you nice. on Twitter then quite a bit? Yeah, a lot of yeah. singers are constantly on Twitter. Yeah, yeah. Please um, add me Claire Maguire, C L A R E M A G U I R E. Um, I love Twitter. I love Facebook as well. I just love um, the interaction you can get with fans, where it's just so immediate and so quick. I mean, it's it's just great because they didn't. You know, I think. When I was younger, if I had that like kind of people that I love the music of and I got to speak to them just like that, you know, just so quick. It's accessible, it's, isn't it? It's for you. Easy for you. It's, yeah, it's, it's to good. To spread the word yeah, as well. And yeah. to also get feedback from fans as well exactly. on what's working and what's not. Yeah, because my fans are definitely honest. <laughs> yeah, that's a good thing though. Um, I read a comment on YouTube, this made me laugh this morning when I was watching this clip of you at GAY. Okay. Somebody put on there... <laughs> Typical, typical gay person. Like, OMG, she's a dark version of Adele. <laughs> <laughs> That's just how I thought that was brilliant. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> that's quite quite a compliment. Oh, that's a massive compliment. Yeah. yeah but wow. that's quite dark anyway. She's quite she's, of, she's quite dark though. Quite Does upsetting it... some of her songs. Well, yeah, it's very emotional, yeah. I think. That's what it is. Yeah. She's she's definitely um, emotional. Um but oh gosh, that's such a good comment. I really wouldn't have got that from the GOY performance, but maybe. I just love the OMG thing. It's uh, and also there's a website so 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 gay as well, which um gave you a five star review, glowing really? five star review. Amazing write up. No way. Do you think the gay oh, audience wow. get you? Because I think they do. I think they totally yes. get you. Do you know what? Actually, I noticed that when I went on tour, that is the majority of my audience, like without a doubt. Um, I, I kind of knew, I suspected that it was, but when yeah. I went on tour, I really got to see who my fans were. And I was so happy about it because they're all, they were so honest and 
love great music and have fun as well which is so important sometimes I go to gigs of people who are really great artists but you go and you stand there and everybody's just standing there and it's all a bit kind of serious and nobody wants to you know let themselves go and just yeah. have fun but my gigs are just completely opposite because everyone's dancing <laughs> it's it's the gutsy diva vocal isn't it it's yeah the delivery. I think so I think, yeah. so. I think so goosebump stuff yeah. and of course the almighty mix that we've just A-listed we're playing um, which people are loving feedback's been great for that good well. yeah I heard it when I walked in actually that was bizarre wasn't it yeah <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you moment. obviously saw me on the CCTV. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, got Quick, stick it on. <laughs> <laughs> Are you, do you have much of a say in, in the remixes? I because have massive, massive say. Obviously the breakage mix. Of yeah, the, body you I usually well. pick people who I've been listening to or heard a remix of or just a, a fan of. Um, so yeah, I do have a massive say. I, I'm really pleased with this remix package, actually. I think it's probably the best yet Yeah. for, for my singles. Yeah, 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 definitely. Do you go clubbing as well? Uh, yes. Yeah? You, actually, I was going to go to Heaven last night, but it was shut. Oh, So I was yeah. a bit upset about yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> that, um, that's one loyal, dedicated <laughs> heaven goer, isn't it? <laughs> to turn up when it's not open. <laughs> uh, yeah, I like going there. Yeah, I do. I, I'm, I'm kind of like one of the people that if I get a night free, I like to go out and have fun. You've got to, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Do you get much time for that, though? Because obviously you're very, very busy. Not you? really. But sometimes, you know, like if I'm on tour, um, if we might be able to stay a few more hours after the gig and then we usually just head into a stay club on. or a pub or something. Yeah, Sambucas. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're, they're, they're definitely the death of me, Sambucas. Yeah, and the yoga bombs. Yeah. Speaking from experience, I'll just <laughs> shut up now. <laughs> No, the album Light After Dark. Great reviews for this. Um, it's out now. It's produced by the guy that worked with Adele and Kylie. Um, yes. Fraser T. Smith. Fraser T. Smith, yeah. yeah. He did the, the whole record part from bar one track, which was Crada. But um, yeah, he's a great producer yeah. and I'm really lucky. It's his first ever album, I think. So I'm kind of really lucky. that. I think he you chose the right, the yeah. right guy as well because mm-hmm. it's mm-hmm. very fitting, isn't it? That kind of style. Yeah, I think it's funny actually because it's definitely far removed from what I was doing. Like I was kind of very sort of bluesy sort of thing. And then our kind of mix was he came in with this real pop kind of sentiment and it was just a good mix it just really worked and I was really pleased with the sound of it nice balance because it's quite dramatic but still yeah. joyous as well it's still joyous exactly yeah. which I think and I think like you know my new video as well shows that as well I really wanted to make sure that people saw the lighter side of this record and the lighter side of me because everything previously has been quite dark and I love that and I love I always love dark music and dramatic music but I think it should be fun as well and should be pop you know it's like two sides doesn't it you gotta have the light with the dark yeah light after both. dark yeah number <laughs> seven as well new entry wasn't it in the yeah album chart. I know I was amazing. so shocked so, so good for a debut because, yeah really really amazing like as I said because I just literally came out of only the industry knew me, like nobody else. And uh, so to get number seven was just like mind blowing. Because I guess there is that, you know, there's that pressure of if you've had the critical acclaim beforehand, before the sales, people think, oh, it's only because of that you're actually in the charts. But yeah. people are buying it. People are actually people are proving it. that they love it. Yeah. And it's it's really, it's really touching actually to, to know. Like I remember the day it came out and I was in such a daze. Because I just couldn't. It, it's a massive thing, I think, when you've just worked so long on something, and then, and then it's out there, and people are uh, messaging me like, "Oh, I'm listening to it in my car," and they're from like Manchester, yeah. and then somebody from Newcastle's like, "Oh, I'm you know in the bath or something, listening <laughs> to your songs with a glass of wine." And I'm just like, <laughs> Amazing! And it's kind of it really takes you back, I think. And then when it did so well, and when when I was went on tour, and because I was I was supporting people at that point, so I couldn't really figure out how well it was doing and then I think when I did my own tour and I saw the people turning up and knowing all the songs it's so like it's such an emotional process it's amazing are you finding that you when you look out into the crowd it's more and more people each time yeah that's a quite daunting thing yeah scary yes it's um I think it's a little bit scary but it's really fun I mean it's what I've been waiting 23 years I think to do and I don't think if I found it pressurized or scary I might as well give up you know you can't you you have to really embrace everything that you do and uh, you know I'm loving it have you expected all this I mean especially with the album we, where, where were you when you found out the news that it was uh, number seven where was I actually I, I think I was in my house I was it honestly when that time was going on I was in such a like minefield where I didn't understand anything it was so like I was delirious really when somebody when people told me and then when I looked at it and I was like oh no it's going to go straight back down like I was I couldn't like work it out and uh, and then it just it's just been gradually building and building and it's been so incredible and um, 
you know, I'm so, so pleased with everything. It's brilliant. Yeah. Uh, there's one track on the album, The Last Dance, which was inspired by the death of Michael Jackson, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, well, it was triggered by that. It was actually, um, I remember when that happened, I went and um, I went home, I was out and somebody messaged me and said, oh, he's passed away. And I said, I can't believe it because I was a massive, massive fan of his music and his performance and everything, his writing. And I remember just going home and sort of Googling it. And then just seeing all these really, really disrespectful comments, and I just, I just didn't like it because I just thought the amount of like kind of joy he's given me musically from when I was a child, yeah. you know. So I, I went into studio and I was talking about it, and that sort of triggered it, triggered the writing of the song. But then a lot of different things were going on in my life at the time, which all as well went into songs like relationships and family issues and all these kind of things. So it all went into it, you know. It's a surreal moment, though, isn't it? When anybody passes away, someone like Michael Jackson, you just think they're going to live forever. I know. It's kind of that magical it is. persona, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it, it was very, very surreal. That was what it was. It was very strange. You come a very um, come from a very large musical Irish family. Yes, uh, that's your roots, isn't it? Yeah. Well, they're not so musical. I mean, my dad would find it so embarrassing to sing. You know, he'd never do it, and neither my sister or whatever. But they all love music, and you know, that's kind of I've been brought up. You know, around kind of like where you go to the pubs after, you know, on the Sundays or whatever, and that's it. And then everybody's just playing music all day and it's all the Irish folk music and all that, the pogues and all that kind of thing. It's a very natural thing, though, isn't it? It's a natural natural. way to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. drinking and all that. That's just kind of what my life has been, really. Like the last part, especially the drinking bit. (laughs) (laughs) When are we going out for for a few jars? Uh, What's next for you? Because this year, obviously, so far, it's, it's been pretty chaos chaotic yeah. isn't it for you well I'm in doing, a good way i'm doing all the festivals i'm writing more at the moment which i'm really excited about and um uh kind of deciding my next single at the moment and just working really hard i think and uh, just enjoying it and trying to go to heaven as much as i can when yeah. it's open <laughs> there you go jeremy <laughs> you got your next pa booked <laughs> Are you going to have much time for checking out the bands as well at the festivals? Because normally is this kind of thing, you, you, you go in and you perform and then you go, or is it you're too tired to stick around, or, or do, you, do you like to do a bit of both? No, do you know what, actually, I um, asked my agent whether I could do Glastonbury on the Sunday because I really want to see Beyonce. So yeah. I kind of like strategically worked out the days I'm going to the places to see the people that I want to yeah. see. So, that's, yeah, that's I am going to stay yeah. like... Yeah, a night at least. Yeah, Watch absolutely. It. She's going to be amazing. Oh, my gosh. She's going to play that place away. I have never even seen her live before. No, I've never I'm seen so her. I'm so excited. Yeah. It's a great lineup as well this year. Really great lineup. Yeah, yeah. And great headline acts. I think that all the festivals I've seen, when I've seen who's playing at each one, I'm really excited about it. And a lot of people that I don't really know much about, which I quite like, I like yep. kind of being educated on these yeah, new, yeah, new yeah, acts. Yeah, 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 of course. So the next single, The Sealed, The Short, which. That's the sealed, the sword. I can't even say it. Shield and the sword. The shield, the sword. <laughs> <laughs> I need to be a radio presenter. I need to get with the programme. Uh, that's the next single. We love it. Yes. Um, good luck with that, Claire. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming down. It's been great meeting you. Thank you, you so much. And good luck you with too. everything. Passionate about music.